Okay, so um, what I'm going to do in this video is look at a Laplace transform of um, t to the n. So if we have, um, say, the function uh, f of t equals t to the n, um, you can think of t uh, at the moment as being kind of in the time domain, usually is. When we do a Laplace transform uh, later on, we'll, we'll see that this really means going into the frequency domain, but it's not, not entirely that relevant just yet. But anyway, so we're going to look at this function here, t to the n. And this is the first Laplace transform that is really going to be a little bit more involved um, to work out. So you only really need to be able to do this if the question asks you to derive from first principles what the Laplace transform of t to the n is. Um, after that, um, it's really just a matter of applying it lots of times. And the actual result is very, very simple. Um, but getting to the result is, is a little bit more involved than anything that we've seen so far in terms of the trigonometric Laplace transforms, the hyperbolic trigonometric Laplace transforms, um, and the linear ones. So let's have a look. So how are we going to do this? So let's go back to our principles. Um, what did we say? that the, the definition, let's go to the definition of Laplace. So the definition of Laplace, let's just write it over here. So if we say that the Laplace transform of, say, any function of f of t is simply going to be the semi-infinite integral. Um, sorry, I'm just doing the zoomed uh, visualizer here, so I have to move the paper. So it's the semi-infinite integral between positive infinity and zero of the function, which is uh, f of t, e to the minus st dt. Uh, and it's as simple as this for any function at all. Now, the other thing that we, bear in, that we, have, that we said is that s, the magnitude of s, has to be sufficient that the product of the function and e to the minus st as t tends to infinity is going to tend to zero. And that's really, really important that we said that when we're starting to evaluate the functions here. So let's apply that over here. So um, let's uh, write down uh, the Laplace transform of t to the n is therefore going to be um, the semi-infinite integral of the function t to the n e to the minus st dt. Yep. So let's use integration by parts to find out what that could be. So v du equals u v minus u d v. Yep. Uh, we'll have v equals du equals uh, dv equals and u equals over here. Um, so let's say that we place uh, t to the n as v. And then dv by dv uh, is just going to be um, nt to the n, yeah? nt, sorry, to the n minus 1. Uh, du is going to be uh, e to the minus st. And if we integrate that, we should get minus 1 over s e to the minus st, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's correct. So we can then say um, that um, the Laplace transform of t to the n is going to be uv or minus uh, 1 on s uh, e to the minus uh, st times by v, which is t to the n. Um, and that will be evaluated between positive infinity and 0 minus the semi-infinite integral of u, which is minus 1 over s e to the minus st times dv, which is nt to the n minus 1. nt to the n minus 1. I hope you can uh, you can see that there, what I've done. Um, so let's see if we can tidy this up a little bit um, by saying the following. That's going to equal uh, minus uh, 1 on s, uh, e to the minus st, um, t to the n, evaluated between positive infinity and zero, plus, because we've got the double negative over here, and I'm going to take out the 1 on s and the n, so we're going to end up with n on s, because remember these are constants, uh, positive infinity and zero of e to the minus st, uh, t to the n minus 1 dt. Yeah? Um, okay, so let's have a look through now, and, um, and actually have a look at this. See if we can see if we can find out what the uh, what the uh, what the product here is. Okay, so let's make this um, even simpler. I'm just going to move the paper up a little bit um, to over here. Oops, going the other direction. That's better. Okay, so now let's write this as um, 
over here something a little bit easier. So let's say uh, t to the n uh, times by uh, minus e to the minus st on s. I uh, believe that that is correct. And that will be evaluated between positive infinity and zero plus n on s, uh, infinity and zero. Um, and let's go to take the n on s out. So that's just going to be um, t to the n minus one e to the minus st dt. So let's evaluate this over here. So it looks very scary, this thing at, at, at first sight, but it really isn't because we've got two different parts. We've got this part over here, which we've already integrated. And we just need to evaluate that. And then we've got this part over here, which we need to do the integration for. So let's have a look at this, first of all. Um, if we substitute t for infinity, what is this going to be? So it looks a little bit scary because we've got infinity over here to the power of n. Um, and we've got my e to the minus e to the minus st. Now, when t here tends to infinity, because this is negative, this is a negative exponential, it's going to look, it's going to look like this, isn't it? It's going to look something like this. So when t tends to infinity, the product is actually going to tend to zero. Because do you remember what we said initially, that s has to be sufficiently large such that the product of s, uh, of e to the minus st and f of t is going to decay faster um, that this, sorry, is going to decay at a rate faster. e to the minus st has to dec decay at a faster negative exponential rate than whatever the function is going to be decaying by. And that's how you end up with the product of the functions actually tending to zero. So we can say that when t is infinity, e to the minus st is going to be so much smaller than t to the n, even when t tends to infinity, such that the product of e to the minus st and t to the n is going to tend to zero. Um, I hope that was a little bit clear, at least. Um, so, so we can say that this is actually going to be um, zero um, minus uh, t evaluated at zero. So e to the minus zero is zero. Is, sorry, is one. But t zero to the power of anything is going to be zero. So it's going to be, and that's going to be multiplied by that. So it's going to be zero minus zero over here. So this whole thing over here we can actually eliminate because that evaluation is going to give us zero. So we're now left with saying that the Laplace transform of t to the power of n is simply going to be n on s. It's just going to be this thing over here uh, times the semi-infinite integral between positive infinity and zero of t to the power of n minus one e to the minus st dt. Uh, okay, let me just wind that up a bit so you can see that. Um, okay, so that's what we have so far. Now, if we pay attention to this, this evaluation is very, very similar to what we had right at the beginning, um, up over here, right at the top, just over here. It's very, very similar. We said Laplace, the transform of t to the n, is the semi-infinite integral of t to the power of n e to the minus s t d t. Well, that's very, very similar to over here, isn't it? The only difference is we've got n on s, and t to the n minus 1 instead of t to the n. So it's almost identical. So let's make this a little bit simpler. Now, if we say, um, let me move this up a little bit. If we say um, that, uh, let's call i n equals the semi infinite integral of t to the n, uh, e to the minus st dt, uh, that's that's basically um, exactly what the Laplace transform of t to the n is, yeah. Um, and and let's call um, i to the n minus one. Um, well, it'd be this, but just n to the n minus one, so infinity and zero. And t, I'm just changing n to n minus one now. E to the minus st dt. Um, just in, by way of notation, then what we can say based on this over here is that i's of n is going to equal n on s times i subscript n minus 1, isn't it? If this is i n, i's of n, and remember this is the Laplace transform that what we're looking for, t to the n, Laplace of t to the n, is this, the semi infinite integral t to the n e to the minus s d t, um, and we'll call that i's of n. So i's of n minus 1 is going to be this, because we're just replacing n with n minus 1. Therefore, we can say Laplace of t to the n, i.e. i's of n, 
is going to be n on s, which is what we've got here, n on s, times this thing over here. Well, this thing over here is just i's of n minus 1, isn't it? Now, let's be a little bit clever. Now, let's say, well, OK, if what happens if we replace n with n minus 1? So we can say that i's of n minus 1, which is this, equals n minus 1 on s, i's of n minus 1 minus 1. And all I've done is replace the n's here, every instance of n, with n minus 1. So I'm left with i's of n minus 1 equals n minus 1 on s, i's of n minus 2. Now let's do that again. So that becomes i's of n minus 2 equals n minus 2 on s, i's of n minus 3. Now let's do it again. So what we have here is, you can see, we've got a reduction formula going on. So we've got i's of n minus 3 equals n minus 3 on s, i's of n minus 4. So now we're starting to build up a reduction series, um, which, uh, which, which should hopefully start to uh, build into something that we can, we can simplify a little bit more. So let's go up even more. That's how much paper I've got left here. OK. So what we can say now is that, um, in fact, what I'm going to do is go to a different page now. So what we can say, let's go to the top. It's quite different zooming in on this visualizer. OK, so what we can say now is that um, i's of n, what we had before, equals n on s, i of n minus 1. That was our starting point, yeah? But we know what i's of n minus 1 is, don't we? Because we've already worked that out. i's of n minus 1, we said before, was just, uh, what did we say it was? i's of n minus 1 equals uh, n minus 1 on s, i's of n minus 2, yeah? So let's replace that here. Let's say i's of n, remember i's of n now is really the Laplace transform of t to the n. It's going to be n on s, i's of n minus 1. Well, let's replace that. That's going to be i's of n on s times n minus 1 on s times i of n minus 2. But we know what i's of n minus 2 is. i's of n minus 2 equals n minus 2 on s, i's of n minus 3. So let's keep going. So we can now say that i's of n equals n on s dot n minus 1 on s dot n minus 2 on s dot i's of n minus 3. But we know what i's of n minus 3 is. i's of n minus 3 equals n minus 3 on s dot i's of n minus 4. So let's replace that again. i's of n equals n on s dot n minus 1 on s dot n minus 2 on s dot i's of n minus 3, which is n minus 3 on s dot i's of n minus 4. Let's do it once more, just to annoy you. Since we know that i's of n minus 4 equals n minus 4 on s dot i's of n minus 5, we can say that i's of n equals n on s dot n minus 1 on s dot n minus 2 on s dot n minus 3 on s dot uh, n minus 4 on s dot i's of n minus 5, etc, etc, etc. So have a look at this and see what we can see from here. Um, can we spot a pattern? Well, we should be able to spot a pattern very, very clearly. Um, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times n minus 4 is looking a little bit like a factorial series. Okay? And the s's at the bottom are really just a power series, aren't they? That's going to be s to the 1 times that's going to be s to the 2. So this is going to be on the denominator. It's going to be s to the power of 4. Yeah? Um, so let's see if we can generalize this a little bit more. So we should be able to say that i's of n equals, um, let's say, uh, n on s times n minus 1 on s times n minus 2 on s times n minus 3 on s dot, 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 all the way up to the last or the semi-last number, which is going to be um, n minus n minus 1, because this is going to be the penultimate number, not the absolute last number. So that's going to be representing the penultimate number on s times by i naught. Yeah? Because remember, why is that going to be i naught? Let's say we have, you know, six, six numbers, and n is the sixth number. It's going to be i, 6 minus 6 equals i naught, isn't it? 
So that's why we're going to have I naught over here. Um, so if we evaluate that, um, let's let's have a look at what I naught is. So I naught um, is just going to be um, is just going to be t to the naught e to the minus st dt, isn't it? Um, which is simply going to be oh sorry can't see that. Which is simply going to be um, t to the naught is one, so that's going to be e to the minus st dt. Uh, well, we know what that is, don't we? That's just going to be the normal Laplace um, operator of. Um, that's just going to equal um, Laplace transform of um, of one, yeah, which equals one or less. Yeah, because the function here is one, so it's going to be the Laplace transform of one, which equals one or less. So we can replace I naught with one or less. So we can now say, um, we can now say that this whole series, sorry, we can now say that this whole series is going to be I of n equals n on s dot n minus one on s dot n minus two on s dot n minus three on s dot 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 um, n minus n minus one on s times one on s so we'll just say on s squared for the last one yeah because we're replacing i naught with one on s so now we can simplify this even further and we can say um, we can say uh, therefore uh, i's of n equals n n minus one n minus two n minus three, uh, dot, 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 uh, n minus n minus one on s squared. And these are all going to be uh, on s, on s, on s, on s. Yeah, dot, dot, dot. Um, well, that was a bit useless. I just wrote, we wrote that completely, didn't I? Um, OK, let's, let's keep carrying on. Let's keep going on. So we can now say, therefore, i of n equals um uh, n n minus one n minus two n minus three um going all the way dot 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 times three times two times one because remember these are the last this is a factorial series now so the last three numbers are obviously going to be times three times two times one all over s to the power of one two three four five da 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 da, da all the way up to the last one, but you're going to have to add an extra s on because the last term is an s squared. So it's going to be s to the power of n plus 1. Yeah? Well, the, the numerator over here is just a normal factorial series, isn't it? Which is going to be n factorial. And the denominator we have now is s to the power of n plus 1. Agreed? So we can now say, therefore, that um, i's of n equals n factorial on s to the power of n plus 1. In other words, remember i's of n is the Laplace transform of t to the power of n equals n factorial on s to the power of n plus 1 QED. And we're done. So whenever we see um, a function of t to the power of n, now we know exactly what the Laplace transform of that is. It's just going to be n factorial on s to the power of n plus 1. So let's just do one quick example. If we have... Um, uh, if we want to know what the Laplace transform, sorry, if we want to know what the, the Laplace transform of, say, t to the power of 2 is, it's just simply going to be uh, 2 factorial on s to the 2 plus 1 equals 2 on s cubed. Or uh, let's do the Laplace transform of t to the power of 1 is going to be 1 on s squared. Uh, let's do one more. Laplace transform of t to the power of 3 is just going to be uh, 3 factorial on s to the 3 plus 1 equals 6 on s to the power of 4. 